Hello, Barrett Urshik here from Organics, here today to talk to you about your tip of the month. Today's tip is going to be about the top five coolest microorganisms that are in your soil, or at least they should be in your soil. And they should be in your soil in robust numbers, especially if you're using a product like Organics or some other bio-nutritional product that are designed to foster a healthy, thriving microbiological ecosystem in the soil. That's what Organics is all about. If we can get that done, everything else just works better. So let's move on to one of my favorites, the big mic, Mycorrhizae. So Mycorrhizae, everybody's, I think, heard of Mycorrhizae by now. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungi that is absolutely key in developing deep, thick, fibrous root systems. At the end of the day, if we can get a deep, thick, healthy root system, gosh, that's the best thing we can do to create healthy plants. Think about it. Deeper, thicker root systems are going to access water much more efficiently. If we have a deep, thick, healthy root system, we're going to respond better in stressful conditions around uh, high traffic or, um, or heat or drought. So at the end of the day, it's the number one thing we can do to build healthy plants is build roots. And one of the best ways to get healthy roots is mycorrhizae. So there's two types of mycorrhizae. You've got the endo and the ecto. Uh, the key thing to understand here is endomycorrhizae is more prevalent and, and more beneficial to your grassy plants, your monocots, where your ectomycorrhizae is going to be more beneficial in a woody environment, for your trees are going to need more ectomycorrhizae. And at the end of the day, Holganics has got both endo and ectomycorrhizae. If you think about our lawn material, we're going to have dominant endo. If you think about our tree material, you're going to have dominant ecto. But endo and ecto are both key in developing deep, thick, fibrous root systems. If you look at your roots and you can kind of look at the um, the little white follicles that come off the end of the roots, that's where the mycorrhizae is doing its work and they're building those to be more, more of them and, uh, and to make them more robust and more fibrous. So that's the key to mycorrhizae. Absolutely key to have in your soil and have in robust numbers. The next, next thing I want to talk about is a beneficial bacteria called rhizobia. And the cool thing about rhizobia is it was discovered in 1888. It was actually the first nitrogen-fixing bacteria that they discovered. It's not the only nitrogen-fixing bacteria, but it was the first. And when they discovered it, they kind of coined a phrase to describe it as a fertilizer factory, a mini microbiological fertilizer factory. Think about that. Why did they call it a fertilizer factory? Well, Rhizobia's job is to pull atmospheric nitrogen out of the atmosphere, which is, at the end of the day, let's face it, the atmosphere is largely made up of nitrogen. They pull it out of the, out of the atmosphere and they convert it into a form that is now digestible by the plants. So they're kind of the middlemen that help take that atmospheric nitrogen and make it available to the plants. They're a key part in helping to make sure we have the nitrogen we need to grow healthy plants. Obviously, we're still going to put down our fertilizers. We're still going to do other good practices to make healthy plants by adding our, our nitrogen in appropriate ways. But if we got our healthy rhizobia, we're going to have that much more available to us. Um, trichoderma, beneficial fungi. That's the next one I want to talk about. Again, healthy roots, healthy plants. Trichoderma is key, not in just helping to, to promote a, a healthy, uh, deeper, thicker root system, but trichoderma is actually going to help prevent root-borne diseases. Um, they do it in two ways. One is they just simply occupy space. You know, laws of physics say two objects cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Well, if we can get our trichoderma to be robust and healthy at the root level where pathogenic organisms might impact the roots, if we can have our uh, trichoderma to be uh, out-compete from a population perspective, the pathogenic organisms, then they're just not going to be able to do their job. It's just a matter of good guys outnumbering bad guys and the bad guys can't thrive and can't, can't go in and infect the plant. They also um, work in symbiosis to actually uh, uh, repel those, uh, some of those uh, pathogenic organisms and actually um, can create enzymes that can kind of um, make them less effective. So at the end of the day, trichoderma healthy, in your soil, you're going to have healthy roots, less root-borne diseases. Another fun fact about trichoderma is they actually use trichoderma. Sometimes uh, gene manufacturers, blue genes, will use trichoderma to create that washed-out look uh, because they go in and do that job as well. Just a kind of a fun little fact about trichoderma. Um, and the last one I want to talk about today is cyanobacteria. You know, I'm really excited about cyanobacteria. We've been studying cyanobacteria here at Organics for the last couple of years. So cyanobacteria, we've all seen the benefits of cyanobacteria if we've seen lichen. 
Lichen is that kind of white, mossy, fungi looking stuff, maybe sitting in the back of a farmer's field on an old post and rail fence. Kind of looks like a, almost like a white moss on the side of an old decaying fence rail. Well, that, that lichen is a combination of cyanobacteria and a fungi that's more like a mushroom. And, you know, they live in symbiosis where the cyanobacteria's job is basically to provide the food for the mushroom. The cyanobacteria pulls nitrogen out of the atmosphere. Again, it's a nitrogen fixer, kind of like the rhizobia, and it converts it into a form that the, that the fungi can digest. The fungi needs to live on nitrogen. The cyanobacteria produces the nitrogen so the fungi can thrive. The, the uh, cyanobacteria also aids in photosynthesis, and it produces um, biochemical uh, enzymes that help uh, make everything else work better at the microbiological level as well. So cyanobacteria are really key players in helping produce nitrogen, helping improve photosynthesis, and, prov and providing these other enzymes. So at the end of the day, top five coolest microorganisms. This is Barrett Ersic signing off with Organics, your tip of the month.